So hello, everyone. And it's me, Demetra K of the Demetra K Show and the podcast. And I'm sitting here with Donovan, the recovering Democrat, Sadiq. And on the Demetra K Show, we promote Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are great people, but we can be greater. And so today we're going to have a discussion about uh, Black manhood, if you will, malehood, however you want to say it. But we are going to preface it with talking about that of Kanye West and the situation that he is uh, going through publicly, might I add. And so before I get into the details about that, Donovan, what say you? Hey, what say me is welcome to the Demetra K podcast, you guys. It is great that you guys are listening with us to be sitting in traffic in the rain or whatever. You got about an hour before you even get to your house. Hey, do us a favor, like, share, subscribe, and actually put this on your uh, social media pages and get this information out because we have recently discovered there is a lot of ignorant Negroes out there in these streets and they need this knowledge. So please like, share, and subscribe and even become a member if you get a chance. So uh, this is a, a really great, great topic. I think, um, I hope I can lend some of my knowledge to this conversation. Yes, brother, because we're actually going to need your expertise because I can't tell men how to be men. And I can always talk about what I would like to see from a man, from a woman's point of view. But I can't really, you know, uh, uh, give the blueprint like you can because you got you got damn right. You can't. Right, there you go. <laughs> no. All right, all right. So anyway, as I was saying, as you guys may, I'm sure you're aware to some degree, uh, Kanye West um, has been uh, putting his and uh, Kim Kardashian's I guess, demise of their relationship on display as of lately within the last couple of weeks, I would say. And so they have, uh, filed, well, Kim filed for divorce last year. So a year ago to this point last year, for whatever reason, you guys know Kanye has had some sort of mental issues. Not to say that in jest, I'm just giving, you know, um, a background to what it is. And so um, throughout that time, uh, Kim has started dating Pete Davidson. And Kanye has dated a few other people, including that of Julia Fox. I only started hearing about her uh, when he started uh, messing, which uh, she started messing with Kanye. But it sounds like as of today, they're not together anymore. So I guess it was like a two month relationship. And he's been with other women in the process of Kim and his divorce. OK, and so um, he's made a lot of public polls saying that he's not allowed to get the kids and he wasn't allowed to go to the birthday parties and this, that and the other. And you know, how he wants Kim back. And it sounds like even on uh, Valentine's Day, he sent a truck full of black roses that kind of look weird. I don't know if that's what they're into. Um, and so, you know, and making a lot of public posts about her boyfriend, Pete Davidson, saying he doesn't want him around the kids. And, you know, just kind of like low key threats and things like that. And so one of the last things that uh, was posted was this wall. So he posted this and I'll put this up. So this is actually a text from Kim Kardashian to him. And she says, you're creating a dangerous and scary environment and someone will um, hurt Pete. So Pete is her, you know, boyfriend now, Pete Davidson of SNL. Uh, so it says uh, someone will hurt Pete and this will be all your fault. And so he posted on his Instagram, which is now deleted, and says, upon my wife's request, please nobody do anything physical to skeet instead of pee. You guys know what skeet is, and it's pretty gross. Um, I, I'm going to handle the situation myself, okay? And so I'm going to put this other thing up here. So then he goes on to put, okay, hold on a second. So he goes on to share this. <laughs> so again, so this is what he's, you know, the picture. Isn't that the put, caption we used to use on our show in the early days? We were like, I'm putting all this knowledge and you still remember? Yeah, out there corner. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so again, he says, upon my wife's request, please nobody do anything physical to skeet. I'm going to handle the situation myself. And so there's been a lot of um, a lot of outcry from women and a lot of men. Um, I've, I actually saw Sean King post it. And, you know, he basically says that this is dangerous, which it is dangerous because 
and it's dangerous and it's stalking at this point. Now, you guys know that I like Kanye, but I think we should be honest in saying this is a, a lot over the line. I, you know, I'm riding for him in order to be with his kids and, you know, all that other stuff. But this is stalking. And, you know, Kanye is, on uh, Instagram alone has almost 14 million followers. And so I would say at least one of those people on there might not be playing with a full deck and go do something to try to harm Pete or even Kim because they feel like uh, they are making, they're victimizing Kanye. Because you know how fanatics are, fans, fanatics, sometimes they go out of their way to vindicate the person right. that they are, you know, in love with per se. And so we're going to have a conversation here about teaching men and specifically our men and boys, black men and boys, how to cope with situations that are not favorable to them. You know, and we all have been rejected at one point in time and no, it does not feel good. But, you know, I don't know all the inner workings of Kim and Kanye's relationship, but it, it, it is it's the tale that is old as time, if you will. You never miss your water till your well runs dry. Absolutely. And this is kind of what it sounds like with Kim and Kanye. You know, I don't know. Maybe he didn't really appreciate her. I don't know what happened. But now he's putting on this public display of, of wanting her back. And she's still my wife. I want the kids and us to get back together. Of course, you guys know he moved across the street from her. And so Donovan is going to give us, you know, some pointers on how young men and, you know, boys, I guess, and uh, men of all ages can cope better so that they don't uh, end up in trouble. Because at the end of the day, Kanye, it, if he keeps on, it's going to get in trouble. I don't care how much money you it's got. Gonna get ugly. It's going to get ugly real fast. Yeah. So Donovan, what you got? Okay. First of all, thank you guys for listening and tuning in and stuff. We really appreciate that. But I have a question because you said something in a couple of shows we did back. And if you guys get a chance, go back and check out that show that we did. You made a comment about women staying on code. Men, we need to stay on code. Now, I'm preferencing this to Pete Davidson. This is a still a legally married woman. Why in the hell would you want to get involved with the woman that is still legally married? And I know, oh, they broke up. One of the, the point is we're talking about the law. We're talking about the law here. Now, in some states, and I'm not an expert on this and I can't really do it, there's a thing called heat of passion or whatever you call it. Crime of passion. The crime of passion. Mm -hmm. And that's where a guy or a woman could find their spouse in a compromising position and temporary insanity ensues and they kill the other person, all the stuff like that. And in some states, I think Texas still has it on the books, I believe. Don't quote me, but, mm -hmm. you know, but we've heard of that term, right? So why in the hell would Pete Davidson put him in a situation with a married person? Um, if you were going to get involved with this woman, woman, why don't you wait until she gets divorced? Or, or at least they're legally separated. And even if, even if they're legally separated, she's still married. So, so when we talk about getting on code, that's what we're talking about. Men and women both need to get on code and respect the sanctity of marriage. Of marriage. Because we wouldn't be talking about this right now if that was the case. Kim. What are you doing dating and you are still legally married with another man's children? And some will probably say, well, the same is true for him because he's still absolutely. married and he's dating, you yeah, know, like absolutely, women or whatever. Absolutely. But, but again, mm -hmm. that, that, that's my point. Both mm -hmm. sides, we have taken the Institute of Marriage as if it means nothing more than dating. You know, you know, it, it, that was a sacred thing. And that's on both sides, men and women. So I'm going to say this. If you are in a married relationship, legally married by the statutes of the state that you come from, this is a bad situation because, and I, let's just hypothetical. Let's say in California, there's that the crime of passion law. And I'm married to Kim. And I might have mental issues as alleged with Kanye. I could go and kill that man and get away with it. Not saying that that's going to happen. I'm just saying hypothetically. So we got to think about stuff like that. So on both sides. So speaking of Kanye. Well, let's, his... let's stop right there at that point, just for a second. Okay. Because right. I don't think a lot of people really have examined what you just said in that. Mm. I know for me, I'm just going to mm. put myself in that situation. Okay. If I was dating 
a guy and let's say his wife was as uh, let's say volatile in a way as Kanye mm -hmm. is raw with his emotions I wouldn't want to be in that situation I'm like listen baby exactly you got it going on and all of that however I'm not really for sure what kind of fool you was dealing with and so until you get all that handled I'm gonna just leave because obviously I am the static that you know whatever and, and i'm grinding his gears and i don't want to yeah. create a, 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 a unsafe environment for you and the kids so mm -hmm. let me just take a step back that's right. what i would do exactly so, and, and and that's where i was going with that we need mm -hmm. to start respecting the institution of marriage for those of us that have, get into marriage because now you it, like i said it you hit it right on the nail right there now in, in regards to kanye mm -hmm. this is a woman you lusted after for a couple of years before y'all got together, right? Didn't he have a song about that or whatever? Yeah, he said he's always wanted to be with her. Okay, you got her. You had children with her, okay? I don't know the dynamics of your relationship. And a lot of people, people, especially men, keep people out of your business, your personal business when it comes to your wife or your, well, I'm, we're, we're talking marriage here. So your wife, you know, I'm not going to tell my, you know, yeah, my wife had a sex tape. And that's something Kanye has got to uh, realize, too. He's got to own up to that. His wife is out there like that. And so that might come up in conversation, but that's what he signed up for. So he's got to take responsibility for that. But I digress. He has four children or three children. Four, three, I think. Four, four children with this woman. This is who he chose. They've been married for eight, nine years. And now, for some reason, he they have split up and they're going through, through divorce proceedings. Brother, brother, and if Kanye, if you're hearing me and any other brother that is in this situation hears me, I happen to have watched some of the implosion that was going on in the relationship. And this woman tried to work with him. She tried to work with him, get him help. He didn't want to do it. I'm going to move to Wyoming. I'm going to do this. Br fellas, if you really love a woman and you love the family that, 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 that you say you love, why does it have to get to all of this before you realize, oh, I want them back and I'm going to treat them better and I'm going to do that. You should be doing that from day one because there's an old saying, it's cheaper to keep a... Dun, 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 dun. And you don't know what you got until it's gone. Gone, exactly. And so this woman, and I, I'm not taking up for uh, uh, Kim. I'm just saying the facts. This woman was on interviews and on shows, praying for Kanye, flying out to see him, asking him to get better. And he, you know, maybe he was, you know, because his mom died or whatever, you know, all these little things were happening. But the point is, there's consequences for your actions within that relationship. You can't just keep beating on this woman, beating on her physically or mentally, depending on what the situation is, and expect the woman to stay. Pretty soon, a dog, you keep, you keep kicking a dog, it's going to bite. Yep. And now you want to get back because she has moved on in, in her relationship. He moved across the street. I mean, this is very disturbing stuff. And so, fellas, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that bad chick that you always wanted, remember this. There's always a younger, stronger, and badder chick coming up behind. Remember everybody like Mike Tyson, he can never be beat. That was never true. There's always going to be somebody younger, stronger, better that's going to come along. So when you so so when you do settle for the Kim Kardashian and you got the girl of your dreams, stick with it. God dang it. Well, I'm going to give you all two stories, but I will tell the first one now. Then I tell the other one mm -hmm. um, as we progress. So, you know, as for myself, I was when I was ooh, I don't even know if I was 30 yet. So I wasn't even 30 yet. But I was in a relationship with a guy. And, you know, for whatever reason, it ended. It, it wasn't terribly good to me. I had a drinking problem and, you know, low key kind of abusive and stuff. So I finally just broke up with him. Right. I moved on. And so he would come over to the house because we were living together. But, you know, he, he moved out and stuff. But he realized that he, you know, he wanted to try to get back with me. But I was like, I'm good. I'm good. So one day I got off from work and. He called me. He says, I'm, uh, I want to come over and get my mail or whatever. I said, I don't think you have anything here. So he said, but I'm just going to come over and check anyway. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So as I'm getting out of the car, I see him pull up and he's walking behind me. And I'm like, I don't think you have any mail. I'm just being real cool about it. You know, sure, no sure. need for alarm or anything like that. Sure, sure. So walk into the house and he walks behind me. As I turn the door, I walk in the house. He walks behind me. He grabs me. 
and he throws me onto the couch. And, you know, of course, he's trying to assault me. So he's trying to put, you know, hickeys on my neck and I'm screaming, I'm screaming. Real quick, let me cut you off. Was he previously aware that your dad was FOI? Yes. Oh, so okay. what happened was I somehow I said, my brother's getting ready to come over. He was supposed to be meeting me here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that made him stop. And then he got up because he like had this like look on his face. It was just like creepy once he really thought about it. And so he took off. So I called my daddy, daddy, called my dad and told him what happened. He says, give me his mama's number. Right. Everybody's number that you can think of. So he mm -hmm. called him. He didn't. And so first he called him and didn't answer. He called me back, says, give me his mama's number, his daddy, his sister, whoever. I need all whoever. their numbers. So he mm -hmm. called every last one of them and said, I just tried to call your son and he retold them what I told him. He said, if you love your son, he better call me within 20 minutes or I'm bringing everything I got down there to find him and you won't find him anymore. So they found him and he called mm -hmm. my dad and he says, listen, I don't know what your situation is, but if my daughter ever call me and tell me you did anything to her, he said, I promise you to be the last thing you do. But he says this, she ain't all of that. Says so she not all of that. If she love you, then I love you. But if she don't want you no more, then I don't want you no more. He says, go find you somebody who wants to be with you. He says, but you cannot make her be with you. Mm -hmm. But he says, get yourself together. And I'll tell you the other reason why, you know, the other part of the story um, as we continue. But that's really... Um, it's a lack of coping skills. Like it's right. almost like being a spoiled brat. Well, I, I can't have her. So I'm mm -hmm. going to make her be with me or I'm going to take it. If I, you know, if she won't willingly give it to me, not even just it per se, but just force a relationship on somebody who has tried to work with you. Right. Um. Do you, do you know what, what, what you're just now describing? The new age pimp. These gangster pimps, that's what they do. They go out there and they, they gorilla pimp on these girls and say, well, you know, they use violence more so than the actual pimping game. And I'm not like trying to up, you know, that type of lifestyle. But what I'm saying is you're seeing that a lot where these guys are not taking no for an answer. There's uh, to me, it's it's, it's I mean, it's, it's in and we're talking about men today because we yeah. talked about women last week. So I don't want y'all to think we're beating yeah. up on men. Yeah. Donovan and I like to try yeah. to be even-handed yeah. with the discussion. Um, I, I just really think it's um, it's a lack of coping skills being taught. I mean, how many people, especially, I don't know about especially today, but are rarely told no. And I kind of think that's the case with mm -hmm. Kanye. And, I, you know, my brother um, used to be his financial advisor. And he says that his mom kind of had the same issue. Like, he just would not listen and, you know, kind of out there doing his own thing. So I just think a lot of people, and let's just keep it with men, are not taught coping skills. No means no. And that's how you mm -hmm. have this, you know, whole rape culture thing too. Is like, yeah. regardless of, I don't care if you're laying down in bed with her, y'all both naked, if she say no, yet sucks. Or no, it suck at the moment. But <laughs> no means no. Right, exactly. You exactly. don't get to do anything else past the no. And so we need to talk about what, what are coping skills and how do we teach that? Right. And again, this goes back to the nonsense that women have, these young modern women have in regards to they can raise a man. They cannot raise a man. It doesn't work that way. I mean, you can do the best you can, but at the, at the end of the day, only a man can teach a man what he needs to know. Uh, my mom told me, and it, it wasn't like from a man's perspective. She was telling me from a female's perspective. I remember when a woman says no, it's no, period. Even if you're in mid stroke, excuse my language, but it's no, you stop from that point and you go on. But we have a, a bunch of young men, modern men that have been raised by, you know, in single family homes. I'm not going to say female single home, because I'm going to say single family homes. You guys figure it out that are raised in a culture of that's my king, this, this, that. And it, it, it really disassociates these dudes from reality because they actually believe they're entitled to certain things because they're just there. And you see it in relationships. How many of these young men, which is what I've heard the term homosexuals, are out there moving in with women? When we were coming up, that wasn't happening. You're moving in with me. 
because that is what a man is supposed to do. You move in with me. I don't move in with you. So yeah, um, coping skills, uh, non-existent. Right. And so, you know, for those of you guys who may not know, uh, I mean, coping skills are really just methods of dealing with stressful situations. Now, it is stressful. Have you guys ever seen, and I'm sure you have, right? Seen a little child and you tell it no, because it hasn't been really taught coping skills yet, right? You mm -hmm. tell it no, and you take something from the child and ah, they go bananas, right? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to cut you off. Keep your thought. Don't you have a nephew, a great nephew? <laughs> oh, you saw him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fell on the floor. Titus, yeah. Titus, yes. You know, but he's a baby, you know. Yeah, he's a baby, right. But that doesn't mean that he can't learn coping skills, you know. Exactly. But so coping skills are methods of um, learning how to deal with stressful situations. And so the stress comes in because you just don't know how to handle the stress. And in a lot of cases, a lot of people don't know how to handle rejection. We've How many times have we seen stories of men doing things to women because she simply told him no. You know, she didn't say, get your blah, 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 blah. She just said, no, no, thank you. Or she got cut up on her face or mm -hmm. bit or, you know. Acid assaulted. thrown in her face or something. She said or... no, because, it, you know, you didn't know how to not take that personally. Like, this is not about, listen, she don't know you enough to even be able to do a deep dive analysis into, well, oh, I'm going to tell you no, because you this and you. I just said, no, I'm just, I, I'm not interested, right? And so there are several ways you could, you know, um, learn coping skills. But the, the main thing to do at the, to me, this is my opinion, is acceptance. I refuse to accept the fact that your sister will not be uh, with me and all that. Other stuff. It's been 30 <laughs> years. I'll wait another 30 years. Well, you know, <laughs> but it's really about acceptance. Okay. Acceptance doesn't always mean that you like it. Right. And I think people get that messed up. You know, people think I have to like it in order to accept it. No, you don't. Okay. Like my mom has passed away. I don't like it. My mom has been gone to be six years this year. I don't like it. I will never, ever like that she is not here anymore. Mm -hmm. But in order for me to be a healthy human being, I have to accept that she's not here anymore. And so I figure out ways to cope with that, whether it's praying or talking to somebody or, you know, just whatever I need to do. But first, you have to accept what it is and that it ain't going to be what you want it to be. Learn how to do that first and then implement all the other things you need to do to, to help making the acceptance process easier. Absolutely. And, and that's a good thing. So so how do we go about doing that? I mean, where, where do we get those coping skills from if we, we didn't learn it in the home, especially as men? Where, where do we get that? Well, I see. And this is the problem. I think we have too, just as adults, not just men. You have a lot of grown people running around the planet who just refuse to grow up. And so growing up, uh, uh, you will find coping skills in growing up, right? That's like we talked about last week. Somebody, a grown child comes home and they live with you or whatever. Hey, I'm having a baby. All right. right. Now you're going to learn some coping skills, brother. Because mm -hmm. you out there like an alley cat making babies. Right. Now you got to go out there and make it do what it do. You figure it out. The consequences for being an alley cat. Yes. Right. But you, so it's to me when you're, it's, it's in coping, learning coping skills is also part of the evolution process, right? Mm -hmm. Again, I think for one, if you're not taught that, you just have to know. Because see, it's, to me, it's a, it's a thing of morals, right? Ethics. Mm -hmm. If it's right, great. If it's wrong, bad. It's Is it right to stalk somebody who does not want to be with you? That's not right. So you accept that. And you just learn how to deal with it. She don't want to be with me. I'm going to boohoo my eyes out, but I'm going to, you know, like for me, y'all know my situation. I have to, I, you know, I, I went to therapy. I never, I, I, I've been to therapy years ago, <laughs> but I had to do that to really just be healthy again because I was having a hard time accepting it. But once I learned some other tools and skills and stuff, then it was easier for me. And the one thing, as I say this too, 
stop taking everything personally. I don't yeah. care if a person says, I don't want to be with you because you're a horrible person. Mm -hmm. Don't internalize that because when you internalize that, then you start other things start to grow and to fester. Yeah. You know, instead of saying, okay, while that hurts that she or he said that to me, I'm not going to take that personally. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to go do my work and I'm just going to accept that that person does not want to be with me. If they want to be with me, it's great. With but in the meantime, I'm going to go work on myself because anybody who's ever been through a breakup, you feel like it's the end of the world. Oh, there'll never be anybody else for me. Oh, I don't know how I'll go on without you. Not me. I got what I want. Beat it. You start playing stupid. You start playing all the Shirley Murdoch songs and yeah. all that other stuff. But then once you really just start understanding more about yourself, you're like, yeah, I'm going to be all right. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know? But but, but here's, here's what I noticed here. Um, when I first came to America, and I still see it a lot today, and there are certain situations you're supposed to operate in gray. I could see, oh, this happened. So the person had to go do that. I understand that. But I, what I've noticed in America, and especially in the black community, is everything is operated in gray. Everything. Okay. So what I mean by that is, oh, he comes from a bad environment. His father wasn't in the home. So that's why he's out there selling drugs. No, no. <laughs> it's either you're right or you're wrong. Everybody knows the drug game, okay, and where it leads to, especially under this Biden administration, right? We know where the drug game leads, but you still have young people and do what you got to do to survive. I'm not telling you how to live your life. What I'm saying is, you know, the consequences, but then they get popped based on the decision that they made. And now it's everybody else's fault. It's everybody else's fault. Why? Oh, well, you know, I, I come from the hood. We all come from the hood. Oh, I didn't have any money. We all don't have any money within our community as a whole. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that that's a big problem with a lot of these young black men. They don't have any accountability is because they've been raised to worry about gray. Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. And so I think what people do is they blur the lines between right. the law mm -hmm. and ethics. Ethics is right and wrong, you know, good or bad, but your good and bad may be different from my good and bad, but the law is the law. Right. And so people can, you know, they conflate the two when they shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. One, the law, you could get in trouble for it. And morally, it's a conscious thing, you know, for the most part. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know what you should and should not be doing. Right, right. You know, you know and, and like you said, there is no gray area, you know, that you know, uh, uh, threatening people is wrong. Like there's, well, I just feel like I just needed to say that to them. And okay, well, what's going to happen is because you made a gray area, which is the, the law and ethics, you might end up going to jail because you exactly. can't just stalk and threaten people. And, and it's you on both sides. It. And it's on both sides. You know, uh, nobody should be putting hands on nobody, but you're finding in these younger generations, male and female, where the women have no problem uh, putting hands on men and vice versa and, you know, binary relationships are doing the same thing. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, that's wrong. But then if you're going to put your hands on a man and you don't expect him to defend himself, how does that work? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just think. We're Where's the self-control? Yeah. And, and that's the thing, the coping, the lack of coping, mm -hmm. then there comes the, a lack of self-control. I don't want to accept it. I don't know how to deal with it. So then I'll do things that are adverse to everybody mm -hmm. by putting my hands on somebody or, you know, that's just like, for example, you know, being cheated on and finding out that you're being cheated on is a horrible thing. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people be wanting to put hands on people, right. you know, when they <laughs> find right. that they've been cheated on. It's like mm -hmm. you want to just boop, boop, boop. But then you have to say to yourself, okay, even if, you catch them in bed in your bed with somebody. Now, naturally, you be wanting to, you know, take somebody up out of here. But the other thing is that, you know, while I could pounce and do a lot of damage up in here, it takes a lot of self-control to say, you know what? If that's what they're doing, they not for me. Right. I'm they're glad I found out. Right? 
-hmm. and my clothes or wh whatever I need to do to alleviate myself from being around that person. But it takes control. And I always say this before you do something that may harm you, ask yourself, what is it going to cost me? Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if I'm in the right, even if I'm in the right, what is it going to cost me if I strike out and hit somebody? Or I say something to somebody. Is it going to cost me a friendship, a relationship, some money, a job? What is it going to cost me? And, and and a lot of times you have to be that quick because you don't get, you know, like I said, if you walk into your house and you see your, your lover or your, your, your spouse in the bed with somebody else, you got to be quick on your feet. I want to mm -hmm. snatch all the hair out of their bodies. But what's it going to cost me? Right, right. Um, you know, in, in regards to relationships, and I, I, we have to talk about the, these men, like in Kanye's situation, you got the girl of your dreams. You got the girl that you you wrote a song about. And I don't know if you mistreated or whatever, the, the relationship broke down. Men, we have to do a better job of sustaining our families. I know a lot of women don't like Kevin Samuels, but if you look at the root of what Cam, Kevin Samuels is talking about, He's talking about black families staying together, making babies and doing all these things. Fellas, you guys got to grow up. There are bad chicks out there. But when you got a good woman with you, you need to recognize that. And I think one of the problems is a lot of these new modern young men, they don't know a good woman when they see it because they're looking, you know, and men are visual and that's all they are looking at because maybe they, they see their sister acting like that or they see their mom acting like that and doing all these things. But we need to make a good decision because I, I have a lot of partners that have been married for a lot of years and they're with the same woman, you know, they, they have their little run and stuff They're you know, and they've been with the woman, married her and had beautiful kids and they're doing great things for themselves. But then I also have those partners that are still out there in the wilderness, uh, wreaking havoc, complaining about child support, uh, you know, stuff that is self-inflicted, stuff that is self-inflicted. Now, now, as for myself, you guys have heard my story several times. I've been married several times. Uh, I have two, two children by two different women, but I made a conscious decision. If I wanted to live a certain lifestyle, I need to stop doing this and I need to stop doing that. I have some, some friends on my Facebook page, Dimitri, and you've seen them. These young girls are bad. I'm talking about everything. You know, if I was 30 years younger, Target acquired, right? <laughs> but I actually realize I'm 52 years old and I don't want the nonsense. I don't want, you know, those, those things, you know, coming back because it takes a lot of work. And I'm not going to waste her time. But you got right. brothers, you got a good woman. And in the military, it happened in the military. The base blows up because of the uh, the volcano. You had guys that had whole families over there that the wives here did not have, and it destroyed the family here as well as destroying the family over there. So you ended up with nothing. So, so brothers, we got to grow up. We have to grow up in our mentality. You got a good woman. You need to recognize you have a good woman because think about it. This woman came to the table with what a billion dollars base salary. Well, no, he he. She just acquired that not too long ago, but she has some well, money. Well, yeah, yeah that, that's what I mean. I mean, well, and not only that, remember Kanye was um bankrupt down there, and she gave him the money. Yeah. And now money. he's you know three exactly. to six billion dollars exactly you know, in wealth. So, so why wasn't that in in your decision in regards to man? I got a woman that props me up, that brings something to the table. Ladies, the table means relationship. Okay, it's not a real table. You mean it's, it's, it's not, uh, bringing something to the table is not booty? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, no, it's the relationship, not the booty. Um, she's a gorgeous woman. You know, she's everything you wanted. And yet she's asking you to get help to keep the family together. And for whatever reasons, you refuse to listen to your spouse. Sad. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think that's the, another thing. People really do mess up good relationships with good people. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you say. People do it because they believe the grass is greener on the Always. other side. Always. And y'all remember uh, Fantasia? Mm. She got sued by the other woman for alienation Alien of affection. affection. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she won or not, but nevertheless, the lady sued her. Yeah, yeah, I think the woman did, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, she, she, you know, alienation of affection because she, you know, was messing with a married man and all of that. And on the surface, it sounds kind of silly, but 
I mean, I get it from the other, from the woman's point of view, but it's like, I mean, but your man was weak though. You know, he allowed another woman to come into his life to alienate how he felt about you. Um, and it's just weakness is what it is, you know? Um, and I would say a lot of people, not just men and women, they allow somebody to stroke their ego. Ooh, you're so cute. Ooh, he, he, he. Ooh, hoo, hoo. And puppy, then puppy, puppy. When you yeah, yeah, that's you, right? <laughs> they allow that to happen. And then, you know, their nose is wide open, going over somewhere else. And then by the time you realize it, you know, messed up what you had at home over, uh, over, over fantasy. Over, you know, and I always tell people this, especially when I hear about people cheating and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, tell them that in six months, the new boo that they creeping with gonna be just like the wife because after that, the, the, the fun they and the, the bag, they, they've got the man. Yeah, the all that, that wear off. And it's like, you're gonna be right in the same situation with your wife. You got to pay some bills. You're gonna have to get serious. You ain't gonna wanna do it every night either then, you know? Right, right. and think about this, fellas. You just left this wife for the new wife or whatever you're doing, but you still have minor children with that other woman. So that means money's going to be coming out of your house over there. And you're going to be that dude complaining about child support and this, you know, all the foolishness that you know for some coochie, right? That, that you already had. In, and it was in-house and it was in-house coochie for some coochie. Now I, I, I'm trying to be clean, but that's really what it boils yeah. down to. Yeah. I get it. You know, some people say, well, I just get peace over there. All right, buddy. Wait six months when she started imposing some demands on you because now, you know, because now in, in, the, in the honeymoon period, you know, she ain't really putting no demands on you because you, you, you blowing her, her back best out every night. Right. She's putting her best foot forward. Yeah, mm -hmm. you blowing her back out every night. But then that wear off is like, okay, that was fun. But are you over here every night? Yeah. I'm going to need you to pick up some of these bills. And then, like you said, now you paying for two households because of some coochie right it's supposed to be child support when it actually turns into host support yeah and then you talk like you said and you want to whine about oh well, you know i don't have the it system and, 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 and all this other stuff and then you gotta think about this too and I, I i was watching this last night it was on youtube there was a girl and they were showing us how to put on those lace fronts and stuff and she combed her hair down whatever you know they, they were just you know they were just showing you like this girl was explaining how much time she puts in front of a mirror to get her hair a certain way, whatever, right? She goes back every two weeks and does again. So you get this younger girl who has that mentality. Now, how much does it cost to do her hair? What, $300, the, the, the bundles and all that stuff. And she's doing that not for you. Because the truth is when women are dressing a certain way and putting the weave in, that isn't for you, fellas. That is not for you. It's to compete with other women. <laughs> that's the truth. They do it to compete with the other women. Uh, I've got, that's why you see these girls going to get BBLs. Oh, I could look better than her if I had a BBL. I'm gonna go get a BBL so I could compete. But they keep forgetting, where's the man? Where's the man? But, uh, but fellas, how much is it gonna cost you to maintain that lifestyle? Because now that girl is used to that lifestyle of $400 a month on her hair. Think about that stuff. Yeah, you know, but... Like I said, the grass is always greener always. on the other as, as, as you know, they think the grass is greener on the other side, but as I told somebody not too long ago, but it really be bullshit over there, you know. <laughs> and so, yeah, I and mean, so the other part of that story that I was telling, and so my father told my ex-boyfriend at that point, you know, if you she don't want you, I don't want you. And then he told him the story of I have a cousin that's doing double life sentence with no possibility of parole because he unfortunately murdered his two children Ugh. he drowned them um in a tub of water they were three and five i believe it was three and wow. five drowned them in a tub of water because his wife wouldn't come back to him because he was physically abusive to her now we didn't know any of that you know yeah. but he was physically abusive to her and she said i don't want to you know i don't want this relationship so you know it was his time to visit the kids he calls her and says, are you going to, yeah, he has the kids, you going to come back to me. Are you, you know, when are you going to basically come back so mm -hmm. we can be a family and all of that? And she says, I'm not, not thinking anything, right. was, you know, to the kids, right? Yeah. So it was time for her to pick them up. 
and she's calling and calling, no answer, no answer. So she calls his mother, says, hey, I'm trying to get a hold of him because the kids, you know, I, I need to get to work tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. They couldn't reach him. So my other cousin gets a phone call. Um, it was from the police station, I want to say it was. Or somebody called him. Called her and says, we found him. He's at the police station. And she they told her what he did. And so he actually took the kids and threw their bodies, you know, in the garbage can. Well, wasn't so, the Tyler Perry movie as well? I forgot the name of the movie where they kind of alleged that. Where the was that for Colored Girls? Is that the movie? Uh, yeah, that was that's that's kind of what happened. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it was out the window or something. Mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah, something. Like that. But so my father told him that story. You know what the weirdest thing is? I was at work one day, and we call him a different name, my cousin, and I saw it on the news, but I didn't, I was so far away, I couldn't really see what was going on, and I'm glad that I didn't because it would have freaked me yeah. out, and I found out later, but. The point that he was making is don't 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 don't, don't drive yourself to, to do something like that, because he said that about my cousin. Had he had a different set of coping skills, mm -hmm. he wouldn't have been he we probably wouldn't have done that. But because he couldn't internalize her telling him, no, I don't want to come back. And he not dealing with why she didn't want to come back because he was physically abusive to him. Mm -hmm. He said to her, the last thing he said to her was I will make you sorry for the rest of your life. Mm, she yeah. wasn't connecting the dots until she found out what he did and they were on, you know, Montel Williams and all of that. She was no. talking about it, but that's what happens, unfortunately, sometimes when you hear a lot of these cases, uh, people just don't possess the coping skills to say, all right, I, while I don't want to be without you, that's the way it's got to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, you know, and you bring up a good point with dealing with coping skills, male or female but we're talking strictly about males. It, it, it amazes me how the white male will kill themselves if they make less than $100,000. Remember when the economy dropped and stuff and all those people were committing suicide? You know about the, the, the Great, Great Depression, stock market yeah. crash, 1929? Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like that. And, and even recently, fairly recently, there were mm -hmm. some, some people, you know, uh, doing because, you know, like you said, coping skills that they could not fathom being poor or being a middle class. I don't know what it is, but like you said, they didn't have the coping skills. So it isn't just a black thing. It's just people in general. And we're, I don't even think that they they even teach that in school anymore in, in regards to, you know, coping. Well, because those things should be taught at home. But unfortunately, a lot of uh, parents don't have coping skills or don't, I know how to teach it. You know, like, for example, I have, a, um, you know, a few great nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. So one of my nieces you know, and it's just, and we kind of talked about this the other day, these little babies and these kids, they cannot function without tablets or a right. phone in front of them. Like there's just no way. Right. So every time you call, she's, you know, you know, do FaceTime now she's on a tablet and she, you know, it's not her fault, but she doesn't want to think of anything outside of the tablet. So one day, right. Attention span. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my, my daughter called to talk to her. And her father, you know, answered the phone and he took the tablet from her because she didn't want to interact on the phone. And she ah, ah, just like just went bananas. Yeah. And so I told him, I said, listen, you're doing the right thing. I said, I know it's hard to hear her cry now. I said, but what your child and a lot of other kids, not just her, have developed is an addiction. Mm -hmm. That is an addiction. And Which I they think, call attention deficit disorder. You know, they make up these, these right. names. For it. But because that's what you guys have been using, not to help her cope, but to help you, you cope. <laughs> so <laughs> you've been, she's developed an addiction. And I said, if I were you, I wouldn't give it to her all day. I would give it to her at a point where she knows, okay, this time of day is tablet time for 30 minutes. And then I go do something else. I said, but what you got right there is, I said, that is what addiction looks like when yeah. you need to wean somebody. And so he took it from her and he explained it to her. She, ah, and then like that, she found something else to do. Right, right. Well, remember back in our day in the Stone Age, at least in my day, the Stone Age, not you, because you, you just graduated a couple years ago. Um, <laughs> the addiction, what they would give us is the book. They'd say, go read a book. You'd be somewhere, your parents are like, they want you to have a book in your hand, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn. And then, you know, and then I used to hate it because I had to tell my mom what I read. We did too. Book report. You know, yeah. To, to, to learn if we're, if we're comprehending what we're reading. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you, you know, we, we just, you know, our parents didn't, you know, I know times have changed, but nothing's new under the sun. Nothing's new under the sun. Right. And when you give them these tablets, you're actually not giving them the, the mechanisms that they need to cope. Because when I saw Titus break down, what was he breaking down for? I forget, but, but he was cool about it though. He was cool about but, it. Though. But to your point, that's what babies do because they don't have the tools to say, okay, my mommy or my daddy told me, no, let me go find something else to yes, do. Right. They just want what they want, right. but until they are taught differently in how to cope with that, then unfortunately they grow up with uh, not having any coping skills and they don't know how to accept no which is why you see, I mean, we all know somebody who has a grown-up kid who turns into a full-blown grown-up that mm -hmm. is just spoiled rotten. The parent Still at the house, say, 29 years old, on the couch. Parent can't say nothing to them because they're going to get all mad and all mm -hmm. of that other stuff. They just haven't learned coping skills. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, for, for the guys that are listening here, you, you guys have not learned coping skills to tell your spouse no. And stick to it. it's the same thing in the, in the relationship. Yeah, she wants what she wants, but honey, we, we got rent to make. Or you know, again, we just had Christmas just just went by. How many uh, people went into debt just to give their their kids a Christmas that really doesn't even matter? And then the other, father doesn't want to say no. The, uh, but the other part of that equation that you just mentioned too is she don't have the coping skills to hear or no, no honey. Yeah, I would love to get you this new car or this new, you What's know. What's that bag? Everybody's getting the. Uh, some shit they can't yeah. pronounce. Right. You know, I, well, I would love to get you that purse. We got other responsibilities. And that was, she had the coping skills. You say, you know, honey, you're right. If the time allows, you know, uh, finances allow up the road, I would love to have that. But you're right. We need to be more serious about building a nest egg or taking care of our right. responsibilities. And so. Those skills need to be, and that's right. why too, a relationships don't work because a lot of times you have one person who will just like, I'm not accepting no for an answer. I want what I want, right. and, you know, and, 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 and they don't have any compromising uh, skills or mm -hmm. I'm going to meet you half with none of that. I want what I want. And mm -hmm. then the other person is like, you know what? I can't do anything with you. I, I, I'm not at peace here, so I'm going to leave. Yeah, you know, it's funny that we bring that up because I, I know people are probably like smirking and stuff listening to uh, to the podcast, but you guys know it's true. Even I Love Lucy had an episode. Remember when uh, she wasn't doing the finances right? The light yeah. went off and stuff and Luke, he had to get a, a business manager and stuff. Yes. But, but, but what I'm saying is depending on who it is that controls finances in your homes, ladies and gentlemen. It, okay, so ladies, let's say you want that Fendi bag or whatever this bag is. You should have the coping skill to know how to save to get that bag without affecting what is going on because you're controlling the finances, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would think so, you know, mm -hmm. but then if you don't have the finances, because let's be honest, times are hard and a lot of people out there perpetrating the fraud like they just do. A lot. It. Yeah, you know, times are hard, but why do you need the purse or the shoes or whatever it is to the point of ruining your relationship? You're going to put money into somebody who wouldn't even spit on you if you was on fire. You're going to put more money in their pocket and ruin your own relationship so you could uh, impress people who you don't really care about and don't care about you. You're going to get rid of your, have your man run off or whatever because yeah. you wanted that back. Yeah, Demetri, there's a moratorium on rent. We ain't got to pay rent for a, a, a couple of months now. So I can just take that money and no, pay. didn't we say that to people? Pay your rent. You, you know, I have, I, I know so many people that got evicted over the bullshit. Over well, I hope if, if that's the case, you better get a bag that's going to, you know, you going to have a great resale value so you right. can pay your rent. You right, know? right. It, it, you know, you know, and, and like I said, it, it all comes back to coping skills. And where do you learn coping skills? You're supposed to learn it at home. And you're absolutely right. And unfortunately, as times have gone by, we've got two generations now that are uh, grown, you know, that are technically adults that have no coping skills. I mean, when when I saw that happening in the military, like when I was in the military, long long time ago, if a sergeant or somebody higher in rank told you to shut the hell up, you just shut the hell up. But now you got these people, which I don't understand. If you're not used to taking orders, why are you in this organization? They never learned how to STFU. Right. They never learned how to shut the F up. 
-hmm. you know, and that comes again. It all starts from home. A lot of parents really don't believe that it does, but it starts from home. How do you send a child out into the world that doesn't learn any of the basic behavioral, you know, uh, skills at all, right? Like I would tell y'all, and Donovan, I know you've been on your own, you know, out in the world since you were 17. I've been on my own since I was 19, you know, but I, I had to learn, you know, but I had a pretty disciplined grow, uh, mm -hmm. childhood and stuff. So I was okay with a lot of things I didn't know, but I had to learn it, right? You like, learn them, yeah. Wait, what you don't know, you, you're going to learn quick. But I didn't go out into the world with no type mm -hmm. of knowledge about mm -hmm. something, right? Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, we're just turning out, and, and and there's a lot of older people who just possess no type of just. It's like, you know, it, you know, the yeah. Parents can teach you nothing. Nothing. I mean, and and again, I I put a lot of onus on the men. Okay, uh, you're 40 years old. You just got out of the the uh, 1995 crime bill jail term, and you're coming back on the streets. Now, let's face it, these streets are for the Thundercats. You're Now you're an old cat. Okay? <laughs> they, they run the old dudes off the block. So in the time that you were in, you mean nothing now. Okay? You weren't a, you weren't a shot caller when you went in. You definitely ain't going to be a shot caller. Weary girls are out of style. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, and these guys are running into their, their sons. And, you know, I'm not going to talk about the daughters, but I'm talking about they're running into their sons, and they have nothing to teach them at all whatsoever and it's and it's just sad and you know men we really got to start taking responsibility for that and changing that culture and what i'm when i when i try to tell men especially guys that are in my age group give up trying to uh talk to uh, to your grown sons give give that up they're not going to listen to you they have no respect for you in most cases try to get to the grandkids and the great grandkids and make a well, difference what would make you think what, what, what in your opinion why wouldn't a son have respect for his father? Well, and I'm not saying all sons. What I'm saying is if you came out of a, of a prison bid and you didn't do anything to help the family, you know, a lot of boys, we look at that and we say, well, you didn't do nothing for me. You know, your excuse was you were in jail. Like, OK, my, my mom's a widow. So my father has a legitimate excuse of why he didn't contribute to my wealth, me and my brother's welfare. You see what I'm saying? Right. But you've got guys that are right there on the block that don't do anything. They have other children. They keep making the same mistakes over and over and nobody's holding them accountable to that. And yet they expect these young men to respect them. Respect is earned. It's not just given, it's earned. And in a lot of cases, I have to side with, with, with some of these young uh, males. Yeah, you don't have to respect him. What did he do to earn your respect? Nothing. Yeah, and in a lot of cases too, I mean, I just say this as a parent, we're supposed to be setting the blueprint, right? So, you know, they can at least try to follow from it. But I mean, if you ain't doing much better than the kids, I mean, it's like, what can you really tell me? What right, can right. you really show me? Yeah, I, I, I've seen shows or listened to podcasts where the father was like, hey, son, uh, son give me a dollar. They want the father, uh, the father wants the kids to take care of them. Well, I just got out of jail. So can I come stay with you? No, that isn't how it works. You, you, you're not supposed to inconvenience your son who worked all his goddamn life and made the right decisions and struggled with his mother. And now you come out of prison and now and now you want to be Mr. Sorry Face. Oh, feel sorry for me. It's over for you, dude. It's over. It's over. And, yeah, and I'm, because I'm, your, I'm your mama, or your daddy. That's automatic where you should put yeah, me up no. here. Right, right. And I and agree. The, you should show your parents reverence. You should. Right. But it's like, it's got to be a little bit more than I'm your mama, I'm right. your daddy. Right. Because, you know, if, if I'm coming out of prison after a 20 year bid from the 90s and Joe Biden's crime bill and all I could tell my son is, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't want to sell no drugs like I did. You know what? He already knows that. He already knows that. You want to know why? He had a good mother that he struggled with. And that's why he graduated from Northridge University or whatever university it was. And he's out there getting it on his own, started his own family and he's responsible for his own family. Right. You know, so it starts with the men. And like I said, I know a lot of ladies are listening. And they say, oh, Donovan's always uh, coming hard on the women. But see, what it is, is if you guys had started with Demetra and I years ago, I was always hard on the men. Always. Because if I have to pay my child support, I want you to pay your child support. <laughs> I mean, because I remember you always just say, 
when uh the the uh, the soldiers i don't know the uh, ranks and stuff would come yeah. to you because you obviously were higher in rank and they would mm -hmm. cry about you know the, the wives or the child and the half of the rent and what <laughs> yeah you would say i'm sorry i can't sympathize with you you a man right are you yeah are you a man but say that again are you a man well she ain't got herself half of the rent why would she need to She's your wife. She's having your children. She's she's sleeping with you every night. She's maintaining the house. And besides the fact that the government subsidizes you to pay your rent. So <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> right. So in that respect, you, you weren't like, well, you should well, put her out. <laughs> right, right, right. Or, you know, and I didn't operate in gray. I said, this is how it is. This is you're right. a man. You married her. Right against military regulation because it's still on the books you, you you didn't ask permission to get married you went and married her on your own so here we are yeah so i mean like i said i, I have one child and she's grown um but i just think you need to teach kids and i tell y'all that all the time my daughter was spoiled rotten when she was like you know she wasn't still rotten yeah quite <laughs> when people say she's spoiled now what she is you know but the rotten part you know she wasn't even one yet and her father and I would have a difference of opinion as to how to raise her. He wanted to give her everything she wanted. And, you know, I didn't really have the, uh, I don't know, the, the smarts to put my foot down. Mm -hmm. And then one day, my mom's best friend, she said to us, y'all don't love y'all child. Y'all are in love with your child. Because mm -hmm. y'all just let her just do whatever. She right. says, but when you love something, you you discipline it even though it, it hurts you and it hurts them but you're going to produce a better child right. instead of having this oh i just can't see you oh i can't stand to see you cry just give it you're yeah, raising a monster yeah everything is a perfect day doesn't matter i mean there are no there are no losses participation trophies for everybody no and that's another problem we're having with a lot of these young athletes everybody expects a participation trophy and i'm giving an example shikari richardson she wants a participation trophy, but she won't do the work. Right. And then the other thing, too, since we brought up uh, sports and we got a couple mm -hmm. minutes here, but, yeah, you know, like well, a lot of the times that we've heard about the athletes doing something to their baby mama, you know, or to the yeah. child, no coping skills, no right. wherewithal to say, you know what? I knocked the stripper up. I'd hate it. I don't love it at all. But. I knocked the stripper up. Mm -hmm. So let me just figure out how much I'm going to need to pay her. Or maybe I just need to figure out if I'm going to stay with her. But at the end of the day, we created a child and we need to move toward that direction of how to make this optimal for everybody opposed to, well, I don't want to be with her. And I know, you know, we just going to get somebody to just run her over, <laughs> you know, yeah, whatever. Exactly. Athletes really killing people. But, 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 but haven't we also made a society to where there's no accountability because you have money and money I think will get you out of everything i got a lawyer so that'll get you know think about it if, if i'm an athlete and i'm going against a excuse me ladies a 304 or whatever you know she she, she finessed me or whatever you know but I, it's my fault because I, I got finessed but because i have a lawyer and i have means i could put her in a situation that could be dire to her where i win and she's getting in you know, and, and, and you hear stories about women that are taking the load of having the baby and the guy's just going on with his life like it's no big deal. Yeah, you know, but so it's at the end of the day, and just to bring his full circle to Kanye, mm -hmm. you know, even though he has a bunch of money, that doesn't absolve him of doing the right thing and acting like he has some sense and he needs to go learn some coping skills. And I hope that somebody, a good auntie or somebody in his yeah. life can get next to him and somebody who was not afraid of being cut off from the money train or yeah. whatever the case is somebody who's like you know what what i'm gonna say to you may cost our relationship because you're gonna be mad and want to cut me off but i feel like i need to say this to you nevertheless leave that girl alone go get you some therapy get some coping skills and accept yeah. that she does not want to be with you and move on with your life get healthy so the next person you end up with you don't go through this and they don't go through it either what's the moral of the story Demetra? I mean, the moral of the story is, you know, don't take people for granted. I, I mean, I really think that's the long and the short of it. I mean, I don't really know all the situation with yeah. them. 
but don't take people for granted because we see it all the time. You screw over a good person, you know, you thinking, oh, you know, I'm on top of this right here. And, you know, somebody who's been really good to you and loves you and all of that. And then you find out what well, down that person ain't never did nothing to me. You right. know, and then you they, then you, you want them back and perhaps they've moved on already. Exactly. So don't um, take people for granted. Yeah. Uh, my, my moral of the story is uh, we need to stay on code when it comes to this marriage thing and respect the institution of marriage. You know, so, you know, Pete Davis put, you know, injecting himself in a marriage that is still active was to me a wrong move. So to me, the moral of the story is this, you guys, and I'm, I don't give a damn if you agree with it or not. The mo money, mo problems. <laughs> okay. And this goes to show you that no matter how many billions of dollars that you have, you have the same problems as an everyday, regular person when it comes to these relationships due to a lack of coping skills. And I, I just want to say, I, I don't believe in more money, more problems. I think, you know, um, if you don't know how to deal with more money, right. you don't have more problems. problems so. right. <laughs> right. Right. Big so difference. Yep. So anyway, y'all, thank y'all so much for being here. We love and appreciate y'all. You can find this on iHeartRadio, Speaker, Spotify, Podbeam. And you can mm -hmm. see that at the bottom of the screen. Also, we have ways of donating to help um, this channel, New Black Media, Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. Every little bit that you guys donate uh, to the channel helps. Also, you can become a channel member um, if you haven't already. Subscribe and please like this video so that other people can, uh, I guess, get the algorithm, whatever it does. Um, and spread the knowledge. And so we will see you guys around. Thank you, Donovan, so much for being here. Um, and we will see y'all on the next time, you guys. Be good. Have a great day. Peace.